I'm Alex Polizzi, and I worked in top hotels for over 20 years. I don't know quite what I was expecting, but not this skanky old dog. But as the hotel inspector, I've also seen the worst. There's about five years' worth of dust on that. I've just passed a nice big poo. Now in my tenth year, I'm turning up the heat. Clearly, what I need to do is maybe punch him once or twice in the face. What on earth is that abomination on my bed? Well, it's just a kind of bonkers setup, and it has to stop now. I was in a really good mood, you know, once upon a time. If they don't want my help, I'm out. Do you want me to be here? I will go. And if you don't want me to come back, I won't. <sighs> if they don't like home truths, Poor. too bad. The rooms are dirty, and I'm not going to stay tonight. This year, I'm in no mood to mince my words. <sighs> this, for me, would be a hotel of last resort. It feels perfectly pleasant, but completely forgettable. As I battle to bring them back from the brink. So struggling with this. This time, I'm at a struggling seaside b and I mean, this is a really ugly area. With an overwhelmed owner. Oh, God, do I cry now? <laughs> who's burying her head in the sand. And the only reason, really, you've kept afloat in these last two years is because of J Jamie's job. Mm. Blackpool is a very well-known tourist attraction. This time, I'm 20 minutes down the road in St Anne's, which is supposed to be a more laid-back place. But at the Seacroft, owner Georgina's approach to running her eight-bedroom B&B is anything but relaxed. I'm a little bit of a control freak, I suppose. But um, I just like things nice. The two main things I check for, really. One is smears on the taps and chrome. The other one's pubes. We don't have no pubes. After a career teaching business studies, two years ago, she decided it was time to finally put into practice what she preached. This is my big opportunity to not just talk about theory, but to really do it all, you know? It was a decision inspired by fond memories of growing up in her parents' Blackpool guest house. This is where it all started. My parents moved here when I was about uh, nine years old. In the 80s, it was always sunny. There was lots of guests around, you know. My dad and mum, in my head, made it look effortless. And I thought, I can do that, I can do that. But times have changed, and with her B&B almost empty outside the summer season, Georgina doesn't have nearly enough guests of her own. In the first year, we made um, a £20,000 loss. The second year, we lost 10000 10, so we're 30000 down. To make matters worse, a shock bill for £50,000 of unforeseen repairs has forced husband Jamie to work away from home to keep the Seacroft afloat. How are you doing? Yeah, not so bad. Um, we've had a couple of inquiries for next year, but nothing for the next few weeks, or December or January. And it's left their relationship under strain as she struggles to cope with running the B&B. You can be away two or three times a week, so... And uh, I'm literally on my own. Apart from my parents. <laughs> uh, I won't talk about that. <laughs> have you sprayed that for a whole minute? Yes. Waited? Have you? Yes. Have you really? Yes. I bet you have been. Yes, man, Fiora. Yeah, fuck off. I rely on them, and I've probably been too reliant, and I think that's to do with my own confidence. When we're quiet, I can probably handle up to about six people on my own. When it starts getting beyond that, it, it's, it's, it's tricky. Now, with the business and Georgina both at breaking point... I despair sometimes. Once the savings have run out, then we've nothing left. She's hoping I can help save her struggling seaside B&B from sinking without trace. This is like a last chance soon. Experience tells me this isn't going to be easy, though. I always get nervous when I'm coming to a seaside town. There's always a lot of competition. I'm just at that crossroads now as to where we go next. If nothing can be done, which I hope that's not the case, then I'd have to pursue other options. It's quite hard to find your niche in the market and enough customers to fill your room so that you get your share. 
First impressions aren't great. The Seacroft's public face certainly isn't doing much to help it stand out from the crowd. It looks like a classic Victorian building. Um, a bit old-fashioned signage. Don't exactly set my world on fire, but you know, I've seen a lot worse, frankly. But it's hardly the most inspiring sight to lure in passing trade. Let's see if things get any better inside. Nice Alex. to meet you. I'm Georgina. Welcome to the Seacroft. Thank How you. was your journey? Good. Good, good. It's freezing cold. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> and you can't help that. Um, to go and have yeah, a chat. Yeah, um, to go to the bar. Thank you. The welcome's certainly warmer inside, but there's one burning question on my mind. Tell me about why you bought this place and what you thought it was going to be like. Yeah, I ask myself the same question quite often. After teaching for 16 years, I decided to look for a career change. And my parents had a history in ho hotels, so I thought, why not? Let's go for it. And you've had a tough two years. <laughs> it has been a tough two years, yeah. <laughs> You're still smiling. Yeah, I know. I don't know why. <laughs> have you picked out a room for me? I have, yeah. Lead on, then. OK, follow me. Priced at £85 per night, including breakfast, Georgina's booked me into the Seacroft's executive double room. OK, this is room three, and you have a view of the church. What on earth is that abomination on my bed? <laughs> that is a swan. Well, I definitely don't approve of that. <laughs> Thank you. It's a bit like the pointed loo paper. I hope you haven't done that too. <laughs> <laughs> if it's all right with you, I'll look around on my own, then I'll come back that's, and find that's you. That's fine. All the rooms are open. OK, okay. lovely. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. First impressions aren't bad. In fact, the terrible towel origami is an oddly over-the-top touch, given the rest of the room. There is a, a nice coffee machine, which is definitely a step up from the ordinary B&B. Let's see the bathroom. It's the best we've got, best we can do. So I'm sure she'll find um, bits and pieces that she wants to improve. That's fine. That's why she's here. So she's a hotel inspector, a little bit like an offset inspection for a teacher, I suppose. But... <laughs> well, this is certainly very smart um, and recently done. And an incredible array of toiletries, frankly, for bed and breakfast. I don't know quite what this stuff is. Shoe shine, sewing kit. I mean, it's slightly over egging the pudding. Georgina clearly has high standards, but she's providing far more than the basics I'd expect in a B&B. It's not just my executive room either. Everything is noticeably, remarkably clean. This bathroom, I can see even from here, looks somewhat more dated than the one I'm blessed with. However, there is a soap here, there's a flannel, there's all the stuff that I had in my bathroom. So she's not just putting on the ritz for me. It must be costing her a fortune, but downstairs in reception, she's clearly hit on an unusual idea to make money, not spend it. I see a Seacroft mug here, which must be part of the merchandising experience. There's a Seacroft T-shirt. There's a Seacroft uh, baseball cap. I really dislike this. And I think it misunderstands the, the basic transaction that you make with a guest in a bed and breakfast, which is to provide them with a bed, bath and breakfast, and then strip to the best of your ability. This isn't the business that Georgina should be engaged in. Before long, I'm wondering if she actually has any idea what that business is. This is not a personal attack. Mm. I can see that you're kind of slightly like a rabbit in the headlights. Like, what the fuck do I do <laughs> now? I'm at the Seacroft in Lytham St Anne's. Owner Georgina's extravagant toiletries and branded souvenirs are more five-star hotel than seaside B&B. But in the bar and breakfast room, it feels like I've been sent to the headmistress's office. Well, just to start with, I... All of this signage. I mean, it's so bossy. Please do not bring own food into the bar or communal areas. Children under the age of 18 will not be permitted in the bar area after 9 o'clock. I mean, this is a... 
really ugly area, and there's no way around it. It's just mad. I'm going to have to tackle this dated decor, but first I think Georgina needs a quick lesson in the art of the warm welcome. One of your taglines is a home away from home. You know, this isn't very home away from home. You know, under 15s, no drug dealing on the premises. I mean, this is hardly an inner city pub where you have to announce that to <laughs> That's people. a licensing requirement. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't have to be there. Oh, OK. Her rigorous approach to rules and regulations isn't the only problem. This room, there's a terrible mishmash. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> chandeliers and this rather expensive feature wallpaper. Oh, uh, we inherited that. She might have inherited the poor first impression guests are getting in here, but the same can't be said for the one they're getting outside. So did you change the signage? Yeah. To what you have now? Yeah. I'm not madly in love with your signage. I'm sure the dated exterior and unwelcoming public areas aren't doing anything to pull in punters, but it can't be the only reason she isn't busy. What are you failing at? The main thing that we feel we're failing at is that we are not driving sales or finding alternative revenue streams for the, for the property. You seem like a very good advocate for your establishment. Do you get <laughs> out and about enough to...? No, to... Because, if Jamie's here, it's not so bad, but when I'm on my own, there is a, a steady flow of things that I have to go food shopping, we buy everything fresh daily, um, and then uh, laundry turns up at certain aspects of the day. So but surely you don't have laundry come every day? No, no, that's just, that's just once a week. I think I've put her on the defensive, but instead of making excuses, she needs to make time to market her B&B. And given her generosity in the bathrooms, there's something else I want to know. What does it cost you to put a room on? You know, this um, is a standard question yes. of mine. <laughs> across, on average, across all the rooms, it's about between 15 and 20 pounds per room. Does that 15 pounds include breakfast? No. You've got uh, quite a lot of toiletries in the bathroom. I'm gonna analyze all those costs with you. In any B&B, margins are tight, so I want to make sure she isn't giving away her profits with the freebies. And I've heard that could be even more vital soon. I'm very worried, because I believe Jamie's giving up work next month, isn't he? He's considering doing this. And the only reason, really, you've kept afloat in these last two years is because of J Jamie's job. Mm. Yeah, I know, yeah. We've, uh, it's, it's, it's a very difficult consideration, but I just, I've got to the point where, when we are busy, it's just too much for me on my own. The rooms are immaculate. They're not, you know, high-end particularly, mm. but what you've done has been very well considered and they are immaculate. All of that is wasted unless you have people filling them. It's textbook avoidance tactics. She's struggling to run the B&B &B, and I'm starting to suspect she's just focusing on the easy bits like cleaning and finding ways to avoid tackling the tough stuff like marketing. Instinctively, she feels like she has to have an answer for everything. She spends hours here every week with absolutely nobody here. You know, what is she doing? Gosh, that's been a challenge. I've had a right grilling. <laughs> it's always difficult to receive criticism, but this is constructive criticism. Not many uh, millionaires work for anybody else, you know, so if you're going to be a millionaire, then you've got to work for yourself. In the cold light of day, even a cursory inspection of the accounts reveals her numbers just don't add up. Overall for 2016, she had 23% occupancy. Overall for 2017, she had 27% occupancy. 4% improvement in a year when you're starting from such low basis is really not enough. I think she's probably astonished at her inability to fix this. I'm sure that she thought that she was going to be able to make this better quicker. I'd love to know how other places of comparable size or slightly bigger are doing in the same business environment. I can advise hoteliers how to improve their offering until I'm blue in the face, but if occupancy is a problem for all the B&Bs in a particular area and there just aren't enough guests to go around, it makes my job a lot harder. But that's not a subject for an empty stomach. Morning. Good morning, how, how are, are you? you? I'm really well, Good thank to see you. you. I looked at the menu. Fabulous. I'm definitely going to want some poached eggs. I might have a sausage, if you think it's a good sausage. And then I'll have some brown toast, please. Tea or coffee? Coffee, coffee, coffee. coffee. Strong. Thank you, darling. That's so, lovely. Although I'm her only guest, Georgina's called in reinforcements. Can I take anything in? You can take that in, then, but just get a glass of water as well. Right. 
With husband Jamie away, Mum Evelyn and Dad Fred are on hand to help out. OK. Right, OK. Good luck with that. Oh, thank you. Can you sleep well? I slept it's so good. quiet here. It's lovely. Yes, yeah. Thank you, darling. Ooh, it's a feisty one. Were you happy when Georgina said she wanted to go into this business, or did you think it was a bad idea? Well, no, I could understand why she wanted. I mean, she'd been brought up with us. We've always been in business, but I just explained to her, but it's hard work. Yeah. But, if you, you know, you'll get out of it what you put into it. Do you see eye to eye with Georgina? Well, we get by. <laughs> We're not so bad. She panics sometimes, and she's no need to do. I'm more practical, you see, down to us. You've got to be ready for everything. Everything. Yeah. One thing she clearly wasn't ready for were my initial impressions of the B&B. Sometimes things she says are very difficult to hear, yeah. especially when you're thrown heart and soul into it, you mm. know? To me, it's constructive criticism. To whatever she finds, she's not being nasty. She's just, you know, trying to put points over, and this is what you listen and how you learn. But for now, Georgina has more pressing matters on her mind. You ready for some poached eggs? Yeah. Right. Is that the most important poached egg in the world? Just chuck those in the bin for me. Thank you. What really should be a simple enough order seems to have put her in a spin. I told you to be poached eggs. Oh, yeah. no, I, was, I hate doing poached eggs. They're, they're like my, my least favourite thing in the world to do. Even something as straightforward as cooking one breakfast clearly takes a team effort here. Right. Wish Jamie was here. <laughs> he does a poached egg, Jamie. You got some black pepper for me? Oh, yeah, out there, thanks. Despite the flap over my food, when it arrives, it's actually very nice. So I wanted to ask you, as a hotelier yourself, you must have an opinion about what Georgina's doing wrong. I do criticise sometimes, like, but nothing... Uh, it just causes a bit of an argument, so that's it. No, I know. I mean, you never want to hear criticism from anybody, let no. alone your parents. No. But it's obviously something's not working, because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Although Georgina seems to struggle to admit she's wrong, after a good night's sleep and a nice breakfast, I'm struggling to see why she isn't busier. I'm very anxious about this one, because... I just don't have any answers at my fingertips. Is that table clear, Dad? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. I need to know if low occupancy is unique to the Seacroft, so I'm meeting Tim Dixon, tourism manager for Lytham St Anne's, to see if other B&Bs are in the same boat. I'm working with a small bed and breakfast, eight-room bed and breakfast called Seacroft, which is All not right. uh, very far away from here. Okay. I wonder if it's come across your radar. I but... don't think we're doing that much with the Seacroft in terms of linking up. I'm not sure whether they are fully up to speed with all of the events programme going on this year. Those B&Bs that are plugged into all the events and are working with us are doing very well for themselves, so... That is not true, unfortunately, of the Seacroft. It's a shame. We carry things on our website, uh, social media we're very strong on, and also there's the Tourist Board Marketing Lancashire as well who can offer support. I can meet them and see what I can do to help in terms of raising their profile. I need to get Georgina to come and see you. Absolutely. Is that OK? More than willing to help. I really appreciate that. Thank not you so problem. much. Not a problem. Happy to help. Georgina wasn't kidding when she told me she wasn't driving sales. Rather than going out, banging the drum for a and b and scaring up some business, she's been sitting at home, fixating about the toiletries and waiting for the laundry to come. I've seen and heard enough. If she wants the Seacroft to stop making a loss, I need to get her to start facing facts. I went to the tourist office and they said that you're not kind of knitted in to the fabric of their marketing. I've been to speak to them. And, uh, but I think you need to understand that they do a lot of outreach and you need to be plugged in in a much more proactive way. It's not that I haven't tried, you know, I have, I have made attempts, especially in the early days, to do that. I've kind of been distracted by other things and taking care of them. This is not a personal attack. Mm. I can see that you're kind of slightly like a rabbit in the headlights, like, what the fuck do I do <laughs> now? But yeah. the reality is, Donna, you've invested in an area in particular mm -hmm. where other people are doing well. Mm. So there clearly is a market, you're just not getting your share of it. Mm. The best way you can help yourself is by finding people who have an appetite to come and stay to your place. Mm -hmm. While we're finding a way to fill her empty rooms, I want to be sure she has a firm grip on profit margins when guests do stay. 
So I would encourage you, please, to work on those figures that I asked you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know how much it costs you to put on a single room. I'd like to know how much it costs you to put on a double room. I've already started both of those things. So. <laughs> uh, you know, you said between 15 and 20 quid. I want it listed. I want it listed. I want it. I want a single, because it's going to be different for a single and of a course, double yeah. and a triple, isn't it? OK. I want you to really analyse costs. But I also want Georgina to examine her overbearing attitude to rules and regulations. I think somehow you've approached this a bit like a teacher. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> because there's a lot of do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts. You need to take down some of the signs, think about what your real house rules are, think about what you really want to say to people. The problems don't end there. The public rooms are depressing and dated, so I want to get rid of the dreadful feature wallpaper, ugly carpets and jumble of mismatched furniture to create a modern, welcoming place to relax. Honestly, your rooms are fine. There, there's nothing that would put you off. This is a bit off-putting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to give you a kind of fresher look down here. It won't necessarily drive people to your door, but once they're here, we can make it a nicer experience okay. for them. To help attract passing trade, outside I'm going to replace her awful signage too. But if we really want to turn this place around, our main priority is clear. The marketing and the, and the sales side is what we really have to focus on. Really? But, I, I, you know, we need that. That's going to take a little while to get a strategy together. OK. Oh, God, I cry now. <laughs> And I'm sorry that it's harsh, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Making the Seacroft more appealing to guests when they get here is easy. But in a crowded market, selling it to a wider audience isn't. It's bloody hard for me to have to leave without being able to give her a kind of a roadmap for how we're going to make her more successful. But I think it's just honest. It was a little bit tough to hear. The tourist board, who I have spoken to historically in the past, who have never shown sort of any great interest, um, if they demand my presence, so to speak, then I shall go and make um, their life very busy in the next few days, I think. The bright spot in all this is that other people are doing the same thing and they're doing better than her, so it is possible. There's some things that I didn't want to do, particularly for a variety of reasons, none of which sound really good now. Later, my suspicions about Georgina's overly generous nature prove right. How could you be spending £1.50 a day on cleaning products? <laughs> Got a very frivolous housekeeper. You would say over £7,000 a year. <laughs> I've been called in to help the Seacroft in Lytham St Anne's, but after challenging owner Georgina over her unwelcoming public rooms and non-existent marketing, she's found it hard to face up to her failings. I was quite upset after Alex went before, and the reason for that was because, you know, when you put heart and soul into a place like this, and when somebody's sort of saying to you that you respect, that, that things, you know, perhaps aren't great. Parents Fred and Evelyn are only too aware she doesn't find it easy to take advice, and have clearly ruffled some feathers with mine. We don't know exactly what was said. So, no. But sometimes it's better for some, for criticism to come from some somebody else rather than us. Rather than us. us. Yeah. You know, because she'll take it on board. Yeah. Just makes you feel very sad <laughs> that the amount of effort you put in still isn't enough. But the B&B has never made a profit, and I suspect the amount of toiletries she's putting in the rooms is part of the problem. I'm probably a little bit generous. I like ni nice things. We've chosen nice soaps and, and shower gels and shampoos for the rooms. It's Jamie that's reined me back, because otherwise there'd be bathrooms and slippers in here. Every hotelier should aim to exceed guest expectations, but pretending to be something you're not is a fast track to the bankruptcy courts. The key is to be the best you can be and make sure everyone knows about it. The first step is getting Georgina to take up local tourism manager Tim's offer of help to raise the Seacroft's profile with visitors to the area. Thanks for meeting with me today. I just wanted to know what you could help me with. OK. We have a website called Discover Files. We can put an entry on there for you and link through to your own website from there. We also do a lot of work on Facebook and Twitter. Now, the events programme we've got here is phenomenal. Hello, 
We've got 30,000 people for the Kite Festival literally out here yeah, I know. at the end of August, <laughs> early September. The 1940s weekend down in Lytham. We have 45,000 over the weekend. And the Lytham Festival, we expect nearly 60,000 people this year. So that's 130, 140,000 people. My main issue now is to look at outside of those times. Right. Because I want to run the place you know, 12 months of the year. Yes. Uh, could you help with that as well? We have a tourist information centre that's open. 600 yards from your front door. You need to be down there quite often. They need to know who you are. They need to know what you offer. There's clearly a lot going on here, and Georgina's missed a trick not marketing herself to the many niche groups who come to St Anne's. But her analysis of costs has me worried. She doesn't know who she is or what she's offering. I think Georgina's got delusions of brandia. What's she doing? Offering shower caps and, and shoe peeling kits and, 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 and a welcome letter that costs her 5p a time to print out. I mean, it's lunacy. I do feel like this trip is make or break. You know, I need to find out other avenues for business. Um, otherwise, how on earth is she going to fill these rooms? Hopefully, meeting Tim will help, but I've hit on a couple of ideas to show her she has to think creatively about finding potential new markets herself, too. Hello. Hi. Alex, come this way. Nice to see you again. Thanks. First, I want to check out progress on my plan to make better use of her unwelcoming public rooms by creating a fresh modern space for guests. Wow, it looks huge, first of all. Mm. And second of all, you realise that actually the furnishings are doing it a disservice. It's really refreshing to see it like this. I'm very excited. I got your spreadsheet with the homework, what it costs you to put on a room, mm -hmm. and it, some of it makes pretty shocking reading. Okay. So I want to take you upstairs okay. and immediately show you how to strip away some of the costs. Right, OK, okay? that's fine, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. brilliant. At least one thing's already been stripped out of the room since my last visit. Ah, well, I am glad to see that at least my time here has not been wasted. <laughs> no more swans. No, just monkeys in the bathroom. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the truth is, you're going to hate me doing this. <laughs> But yeah, I want to show you how these very few things are going to make a massive difference to your bottom line. OK. OK? You've got two shampoos and two soaps. Right. You can have one or the other. They're sharing a bed, they can share a soap. OK. Two shower caps, completely unnecessary. Okay. Again, I'll let you have one. How can you be spending 42p for a toilet roll? That might be a miscalculation. Well, I hope then. so. How could you be spending £1.50 a day on cleaning products? I've okay. got a very frivolous housekeeper. You're not no a five-star luxury hotel. <laughs> so, by taking out these few things, you could save one thirty-six a room a night. Right. Which is over £7,000 a year. <laughs> right, OK. Individually, each item doesn't cost much, but added up, her over-generosity is gobbling up profits. And with husband Jamie here today, there's another loss of income looming. How are you? Very good, thank you. Yes, yes. So are you still planning to give up your well-paid regular job to come and sit on a sofa and drink tea with your lovely wife? I must be mad. <laughs> Thank you. Do. Yes, that's the plan still. That yes. is the plan. Yes. I'm not going to say anything. I mean, I personally think you'll start raving mad. But there you go. <laughs> now we've got to make sure that this place becomes busy enough for it to be justified. We certainly do. But before I do that, mm -hmm. I want to challenge you to really try and see this place as someone who walks in mm -hmm. would. It's incomprehensible to me why you have the kind of Seacroft branded line. <laughs> <laughs> Following on the in the footsteps of the Hard Rock Cafe, I assume, <laughs> and and other <laughs> ventures like that. So th these are not these are not glamorous displays. I'd love to know how much of it you've ever sold. <laughs> mm, yes. Yeah. OK, I, I rest my case. I want you to clear them, yep. clean them, flog them. OK. While he's doing that, yes. I want us to busy ourselves in getting some business in. We've travelled 20 minutes down the road because I've got a plan. I want to show Georgina how some creative thinking could help her achieve the holy grail of hospitality, year-round bookings. So I have brought you to Blackpool, which is obviously a throbbing tourist hub, because yes. I think we've got to make the most of your proximity. OK. I've got our first step right here. Follow me. Oh, how exciting. 
the spectacular Grand Theatre attracts around 150,000 visitors a year. But competition for the tourist trade here is cutthroat, so it isn't her audiences I want to talk to Chief Executive Ruth Eastwood about. How many shows do you do here a year? Well, we're open uh, pretty much all year round, but in terms of the number of shows, probably about 120, 125, but each show <laughs> could have eight performances in it. You know, so like 125 week, different shows? Yeah, made up of 380 different performances. So, of course. Wow. Yeah, so we're busy. Busy, busy, yeah. yeah. If we could get into housing some of these people for the weeks that they're here. Yeah, brilliant. It would be seven days of um, accommodation. Oh, great, yeah. Do you think that's kind of a, an idea that might work? We have what we call it a digs list, mm. and you go on the list and um, visiting companies can download it from our website or they can ring us up and, and get it and then they can decide. And in the summertime, they'll be here from July right until September. Wow, right, OK. But also there are other casts that stay for longer, so Christmas time, pantomime. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, the cast okay. are here for seven weeks because they rehearse here and then they stay here. A place on the theatre's list could really help fill the Seacroft through the year. So, what did you think? Do you think it was interesting? Yeah, it was really interesting. It's definitely something I've never considered before. Even if you only do it in certain periods. Yeah, no, great idea. But that's just one specialist group potentially booking rooms here. I want her to see that splashing her cash on pretty soap isn't going to win their business. Building relationships will. Bart, this is Georgina, Hi. who's the Thank owner of the Seacroft Bed and Breakfast. Bart runs tours with Nordic Walking UK, whose 60,000 members stride the length and breadth of Britain, whatever the weather. I'm hoping he can march much-needed tour guests straight to the Seacroft. I let the arms swing really nicely. Imagine you're giving a handshake to the person in front of you. The reason that we're here is that I heard on the grapevine that you want to expand Nordic walking uh, in this area. So you're looking for places that people can come and stay? Come and stay and uh, learn how to Nordic walk, or those who are already Nordic walkers, uh, to just join the regular walks, or bespoken ones. As a one-off payment, you get on their website somewhere you can go and say to do Nordic walking. All oh, right. So, Bart, we are refurbishing a bit Georgina's bed and breakfast so that there's a really nice area in which to sit and to hang out. And once that's done, I would really like to invite you to come and have a look at it. That would be fantastic. Yes. It's been a productive day, but before I go, I want to give Georgina a gentle reminder to start counting those pennies if she wants to make a profit. Really, I want you to be absolutely ruthless with yourself about cutting anything out of the business that is, is costing you money unnecessarily. OK. Yeah, I yeah. want you to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Alex. I really fact, appreciate my it. My pleasure. <laughs> I'm feeling after today a lot more hopeful than I did after my first visit because I think Georgina hasn't been an easy character to crack in some ways, has an answer for everything and definitely doesn't want to kind of let her guard down. I think she had completely lost her way and with these new leads, hopefully that will give her renewed enthusiasm for the project. Ha, ha, ha. But how will Georgina react when I put the Seacroft through its paces? It's all a bit crazy. She's got a team of people in there and it's still panic stations. In Lytham St Anne's, work's well underway to revamp the Seacroft's tired public areas, but accepting change hasn't been easy for owner Georgina. I'm a bit nervous, really, about what it's going to look like when it's finished, of course, so um, I don't give control away very easily, as you probably realise. But... She seems to be struggling with my decision to drag her dated signage out of the dark ages. Wow, gosh, that is different, isn't it? Very modern, I have to say. I think it's going to take a bit of getting used to, but hopefully while the light's behind it, it should hopefully draw more attention to it. Fingers crossed. Unlike Georgina, I'm sure the smart signage will attract more passing trade. Good afternoon, Seacroft. Oh, hi, is that Georgina? It is. Hi, darling, it's Alex. Hello. If we really want to improve occupancy, though, we also need to follow up my idea to target some of the different niche groups looking for rooms here. So I have a surprise for Georgina. 
We had quite a lot of interesting meetings last time I was with you, and I want to see if anything comes out of them, basically. Because I've arranged for actors who are in Blackpool to come and stay with you. They'll stay with you tonight, so I will be with you tomorrow morning to find out how their stay was. The thumbs up from them could help secure the Seacroft a place on the Grand Theatre's accredited accommodation list. But I'm not done yet. And then to add to your stress levels, after our lovely meeting with Bart, the Nordic walker, yeah. um, I have asked him to finish the walk he is leading tomorrow with a group of people at your place for tea and cake. Is that OK? Yeah, fabulous. Thanks, Alex. I'm hoping showing off the revamped public areas and her spotless rooms will convince him to book regular groups to stay at the b, &B. I'm excited. It's nice to put the place through its paces. But with my thespians coming for one night only, Georgina really needs to concentrate on that first. If you need anything, I should be downstairs. Oh, right. thank nice you. Nice to meet you anyway. Yes, you too. The heating will be it's just come on, so Thanks. your room will warm up. Fine, you. OK, so this is your room. Has thank a view much. of the bowling green. I'm back at the Seacroft and I'm glad to see the old-fashioned frontage is a thing of the past. Last time I was here, there was that awful, awful sign. Now we've got this very smart sign. And there's a lovely logo on the front door as well. So all in all, I'm very happy. But what will I find inside? With the unsold souvenirs gone, reception has been transformed. Doesn't this look Delighted. fantastic? Oh, it's such a relief <laughs> not to have those nasty cabinets I've got here. a big space there now, you see. So. I know, don't feel it. But it's just the beginning. When I first came, the breakfast room and bar were ugly and unwelcoming. Now they're modern and thoroughly guest-friendly. Using cool colours, Sopping patterned carpets for contemporary stripes and replacing the furniture has created a new area for guests to unwind in. Gosh. Well, this looks so different. It's actually quite hard to remember what it was like before. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's awesome. <laughs> Good. You feel like you're somewhere that you, you know, that is professional, mm. that you, that's thought out. Um, it certainly doesn't feel budget. It feels like a touch of class, really. The decor isn't the only change for the better. We got rid of all the signage, yeah. all that bossy signage. But even if I didn't know you'd been a teacher, I would have known you were bossy boots. <laughs> so you had the actors check in yesterday? Yes, I did, yes. And they haven't been down for breakfast yet? No, not yet. No, I haven't seen them. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to see how their night's stay was, what they thought of their rooms. OK. With the possibility of a place on the Grand Theatre's digs list and year-round bookings at stake... Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we'd like to come this way. Thank you very much. OK, I think your friends are already here, so if you would like to take a seat here, that'd be great, and I'll take your order. Thank you. Georgina's relying on Jamie to impress the guests with breakfast. The question is, has it been enough? So, um, what did you think of it overall? And do you have any advice that we can use? And what did you think of the breakfast? And what do you think of the breakfast room? And, 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 give me some opinions. I'm full, I'll tell you that. Good. Um, uh, yeah, it was That's a really a good nice start. big breakfast. Just, just about spot on. Good old Jamie. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and you think this room's nice and quite pleasant to sit in and all the rest mm. of it? Really, it's very bright and Really bright. Yeah. And I feel like it could be full and I'd still feel spacious and I'd still feel I can move and eat my breakfast without knocking the next person. <laughs> what we want is some where you arrive, it's warm, it's clean, um, you just want to feel comfortable, you want a really nice night's sleep. Does it get the thumbs up from you? Absolutely. Uh, Seacroft? Yeah. Yeah. Very enjoyable stay. Oh, lovely, thank you. <laughs> the Seacroft's a hit, but with tour leader Bart and 15 of his Nordic walkers coming for tea and a tour of the B&B, we can't relax yet. I want to help. I have. I just want to ice these, actually. But okay. These are uh, the scones. Lovely. How many should I put on for each one? Uh, and where do you want them? On the middle there? Middle there, yeah, that'd be great. Two on each? Yeah, see how you go with that one. What are you doing? <laughs> Tour group bookings from Bart could help fill the Seacroft through the year, so the pressure's on. But as usual, Georgina has everyone rallying around to help. Jamie, you know this morning, when yep. I pull the icing bags out, where did you just put them? 
Thanks, Rob. Can I use this one? I don't know. I haven't seen icing bags. Oh, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Do you want them sliced in half? Yeah, Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Fine. Right. Will do. Like... No problem, darling. It's all a bit crazy. It's the first time I've seen Georgina facing a full house, and it's obvious just how much she relies on her family. Ha-ha-ha! She's got a team of people in there, and it's still panic stations. But with my guests arriving, now's the time to keep a cool head. Hi! Hi, Bart. All right. Thanks for all coming. <laughs> Come in and follow me. It's Can I take your coat for you? Right, if you'd like to follow me. Thank you. This is my uh, amazing new lounge breakfast room. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the Seacroft. I'm just going to come around and take some orders for tea and coffee, if that's all right. And then, as you're going to bring everything out afterwards, so what would you like? Tea. Tea, tea and tea, so three teas. So this is the room that I did for, for Georgina and we're really pleased with it. I've opened a couple of the doors upstairs on the first floor so that anyone who wants to can have a look at the bedrooms. Yes? Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Start with one and I'll bring you another one. With so many guests in at once, today is exceptional. But I'm starting to think having an extra pair of hands around might not be such a bad thing. She needs a lot of support the whole time. I think it's probably a good thing that Jamie's left his job and come to join her. The big question is, has Team Georgina managed to wow Bart? What did you think of the rooms? Fantastic. I like uh, the fact that they're very light and they're yeah. spacious. I'm really keen for you two to work together. Do you think that there's opportunities to do so? Uh, absolutely, yes. I think especially you now when, when it comes to attract people from outside yes. who might be coming to this area as a, well, as a Nordic walking destination. Great. Yeah, that's well, we're really keen, aren't mm. we? Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Good. Thank you, Dolly. Thank you so much for bringing the group and for looking around and for being so positive. Today's gone really well, but I've only shown her two potential new markets. Georgina still has to get out and find as many of those out-of-season guests as possible and really follow things through with the local tourist office. We did it. We did it. I don't know how, because they were, the odds were against it for a moment. There was a little bit, yeah. We know that you're busy in the summer months. It's the other bloody nine months of the year that are <laughs> yeah. difficult. And, um, you know, I think we've made a good dent in those nine months between the Nordic walking and the theatre crowd. So I do not want you to sit on your laurels. Go and tell people about yourself. Yeah, no problem. Um, I think that's definitely the way forward. Great. Thank you, Alex. My pleasure. Cheers again. Cheers. Another hotel down. I can hardly believe it. I think this has been a much more positive experience than I was expecting. When I first came here, I found a very dated guest house, and what I'm leaving behind is a much more stylish bed and breakfast. I just hope Jamie knows what he's let himself in for. You've got a job to do as well now. I've got a job to do now, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. Who's the boss? Yeah, well, that's for Who's the, the boss? Bank. No, no, who's the boss? <laughs> yeah, that's just the say bank. it, say it. You're the boss. Thank there you. you. <laughs>